the show tonight. The killer is still out there. There's always going to be casualties. We're in the talk show business. We. Oui. And we must all be on our avant gap. See, yeah, you've got to talk some sense into this one. She thinks we're doing the show tonight. We've got a job to do. John was murdered. The show's been The show, it's got to go on. It's what John would have wanted. Just like John would have wanted us to do this. This final sketch he wrote for the show. After I read it, it's actually really bad. And we're not going to do it. But it's cool because I really didn't like John. show for you. Uh, we've had a bit of a crazy week though, huh Darian? Okay, ha. for those who don't know, uh, we've hit a bit of a dead end since last show. <laughs> um, you know, some people might even think that the stress is uh, killing our writers. <laughs> you guys like that? Okay, well you know, you might even say that John is in a dressing room right now. He's our head writer. He's dead, rotting. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. See ya. Yeah. I know these are hard times, all right? I just want you to know. Give me your hand. I want you to know, buddy. I'm here for you. <laughs> ah, See, are you okay? Oh my gosh, someone put vinegar in my cup. Nothing. Who? Just Brian Nothing. Comedian and my arch nut rival who's always trying to prank me. Well, if I get him, I'll show him. Uh, right. Still vinegar. Still vinegar. Someone is calling me. I was actually spitting because I was surprised I had my phone on. Ah, yeah. Hello. Brian, my old friend. We were just talking about you. You're outside. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm not I'm not doing anything. I'm coming. See you. Where are you going? <laughs> I gotta go get some pizza. Hello, Brian. See ya. Hi. How are you? Can you sit here? Yeah, sit down. Yeah. I got you water. Nice to see you. Thank you for inviting me out. No problem. I know it was you who put vinegar in my drink. You've been pranking me for years. Who else could it be? It could be anyone. It definitely wasn't me. It could have been uh, those people over there. It could have been really anybody, I think. Now, why would you say that, Brian? Well, I'll tell you why, Zia. Because I've been too busy to bother pranking you anymore. What do you mean? Well, I'm doing the Furious Anger Fun Hour, a little sketch comedy. I remember that. That was a really funny night. I went there one last month. Absolutely. But it only lasts an hour. Maybe you had a few minutes in between where you, I don't know, found the time to replace my drink. Yeah, funny you should say that because in all of my time in between, I've been trying my hand at stand-up comedy. So I've had absolutely no time. You've been doing stand-up comedy? Absolutely. Just starting out. Well, that seems like a natural progression for someone like you. Well, absolutely. It's, it's always what I wanted to do. It's where I wanted to go since doing sketch and improv. Stand up's next. Some t nights are good and some nights are terrifyingly horrible. Tell me about the bad nights. Well, you stand up there and you say the things that you always say and nobody laughs and it's completely silent. For I, about three or five minutes and it seems like 20 and you want to go home and cry. 
Are you going to keep trying? Absolutely. I'm going to do it probably for the foreseeable future. You have to fail a lot at the beginning. What about the good nights, though? The good nights have been good. The good nights are great. People laugh, and you, you're so excited after people laugh that it doesn't even matter anymore about the bad nights. You're looking for the good. What's your persona? Like, is everyone has like kind of like a... Yeah, a stand-up persona. I like to tell stories, be really personal with the audience, try to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, as comfortable as possible, really. I like to do a lot of crowd work. Cool. Things like that. That sounds... That sounds... Hopefully. Hopefully we'll get to that stage. Are we doing stand-up right now? No, we're not doing stand-up right like now. Cameras. You'd be laughing too hard if we were doing stand-up right now. That's the thing. Oh, you wouldn't be able to conduct this interview. I'm only laughing 50% right now. Look at this old miss. Yeah. <laughs> She's breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. I'm just happy my mom's getting out, though. Wow, you seem really busy. That's I'm really exciting. I'm so busy, too busy to pull any of this crap. All right. I'm sorry. You know what? Let's call it a truce. Call it a truce. How about this? You stick to your comedy, I'll stick to whatever the hell I'm doing. I'm gonna get us a pizza. You do that. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no problem, buddy. Pepper? Maybe you know, 70% of comedians are also magicians. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you all right? All right. Hold on, I'll just let you in. seems to be the prom officer. License or registration, sir? Yeah, of course. Um, here you go. Open the trunk. Now! It's got really bad breath. I don't deserve it. Nothing. No. No. No, it was nothing. It wasn't. Okay, that was great. Welcome back to Zed Before Bed. Zia, what the hell happened? I don't really want to talk about it as a long story, but what I do want to talk about is our next guest, supporter of the arts and owner of the Rio Theater. Please welcome Corinne Lee. She's not coming. What? She's not coming. What do you mean? Dude, you were gone for a week. A week? Oh my God. Yeah, it was getting really tough to reschedule every day. I got something a bit better. Here, check this out. I rigged this up while you were gone. I have her via satellite. Oh, hey, hello, Corinne. Good job, Darren. I knew he kept you around for a reason. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Happy to hear from you. You know, we won't keep your time too much. We'll just ask you a few questions. Um, now, uh, we all love the Rio, but uh, not everyone is actually 100% clear on what the difficulties you're facing um, regarding uh, your relationship with the LCLB. Uh, can, you, can you explain? Uh, in order for the Rio Theater to survive, we realized about a year and a half ago that we needed to get a liquor license. Because, as you may know, um, our industry has changed, you know, with downloading and you see all the video stores closing. A lot of it, uh, um, independent theaters have been affected and have shut down. And so we came up with what we thought was a brilliant idea to survive, which is be a multimedia venue that has live concerts uh, with alcohol service and then has films and can do all sorts of things. So we looked into it. We applied for the license. Um, and then we were met, you know, we, we were approved to have the liquor license, um, but then when we got it in January, um, we were met with um, a very uh, stern ban on films at the Rio Theatre. Wow. 
because um, you know it was only uh, like la- the beginning of last month that uh, the province had on its headline that the Rio wins booze battle with change of the BC liquor laws. But just recently, I was reading on onlinevancouver.com that, uh, quote, the LCLB has threatened to cancel the Rio's liquor license if they try to show any films in the evening without alcohol. I don't really get it. Um, yeah, uh, you know, so we had the ban on films, and then fortunately they changed the minister in charge of the Liquor Control Board, and, and they put Rich Coleman in charge. Da, da 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 And he came to save the day, and he told everyone that he fixed it and that he saved the day. And we actually thought that he'd saved the day too, and we were very happy for one day until we read the, paper, the fine details sent to us by, lo and behold, the Liquor Control Board. Um, they got their hands on this and made it, basically, they rendered the solution useless because they made such restrictions that you can't abide by them. They don't work with our industry. And so essentially what we're allowed to do now with the big fix is we're allowed to show matinees. You know, when I think about the real, I think about midnight screenings. I think about uh, Tommy Wiseau. I think about the room. How can, like, that's the reason I go. The other option they offered us, they did offer one more. We can have a permanent schedule. If we decide we could permanently remove our liquor license on certain days of the week, like a Wednesday or a Tuesday, we wouldn't be ever be allowed to sell alcohol ever again on those days. And we would only show movies just on those days. Now, again, if you don't work in the entertainment industry and you've never been out to see any kind of pop culture event, you might think that's reasonable. But for the rest of us, we know films are not on a permanent schedule. Uh, Spielberg tells us when his film's coming out. We don't tell Spielberg. Now, what's going to happen to the Rio if you guys can't get this change? People that live in Victoria or, you know, Rich Coleman, I believe, lives in Langley. You know, wherever he lives, it's not here. They have never been here. They have never come to the Rio, and they're making decisions on our future. And, and, and you can tell they, it really wouldn't bother them a bit if the Rio closed down. It would mean nothing to them. Wow. Uh, well, I think I speak for myself when I say that I don't want to live in a Vancouver without the Rio. And that means something. Kevin knows what I'm talking about. Well, you know, it's cool, because uh, maybe you guys could take a uh, slice of our cake, because uh, we've overcome the drinking laws restrictions in Zed Before Bed Studios. <laughs> well, they're not that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming, Corinne. Uh, you've been such a great, great interview. Please come again. Thank you. OK. Okay, let's hear it for Corinne. Yeah, good job. She something, isn't she? Now, our next guests were here last week. Uh, they were seen but not heard, but I brought them back to make it up for them. Here to show us the true meaning of hip-hop. Please welcome the Family go Family go back, keep it on track. Look into the future and we don't look back. Family go back, keep it on track. Let's take it back. Oh, boy. Um, they're not actual gangsters. <laughs> I have discovered the true identity of the killer. Roll the tape. The evidence is clear. I hereby declare that you are not, not guilty of murder. <gasps> Guys, that, that wasn't me. That was a, someone in a paper mask. I wouldn't hurt a fly. Damn it. Now, now, now. I ain't be an educated man, but I can clearly deduce from the, from the evidence presented before us that our beloved Zia is the most dastardly villain of the most heinous nature, deserving of immediate incarceration. Yeah. 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 Let's get him. Yeah. Get him apart. I'm gonna feed him. Get him.